This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. What happens if a star is greater than eight solar masses? Keep in mind that stars this big are pretty rare in the universe. Most stars are smaller, redder than the sun. But it turns out there are some stars that are greater than eight solar masses, and they push right on through electron degeneracy pressure. They're not going to worry about electrons worried about being too close together or not. They can, in fact, burn carbon into neon and magnesium. And they burn neon into sulfur, silicon, and phosphorus. They burn all the way up the list. They take that silicon and they burn at higher and higher temperatures. They finally, at temperatures of billions of Kelvin, reach iron. So they burn, they burn, they burn higher and higher, bigger and bigger elements, until eventually they burn into element number 26 iron at a temperature of 2.7 billion Kelvin. And just like electron degeneracy pressure is the problem for small stars, in the case of big stars, iron is a problem. It turns out you cannot take iron and build anything else out of it and get energy. If you think about we have burned hydrogen into helium and helium into carbon and carbon into neon and all the way down the list, we get down the bottom of the hill and iron sits there. Iron is the most stable element in the universe. Iron is an energy sink. It is not an energy source. Can you create bigger elements out of iron? Sure. You can create uranium and all sorts of larger elements. But you have to add energy to iron to do it. Iron sits at the bottom of the hill. There is no more energy to squeeze out of iron. So what happens is the core continues to collapse harder and harder and harder, and the temperature keeps getting higher and higher. Eventually, the temperature of the core of these giant stars reaches a whopping 5 billion Kelvin, and the iron that's sitting there literally is destroyed by the energy of the heat. Um, an event known as photodisintegration happens. Literally, photodisintegration, the iron literally is pounded apart. And all we're left with is protons, electrons, and neutrons. Very quickly, the protons and electrons combine to form neutrons. And they send out a burst of neutrinos. Right before a star explodes, there's a burst of neutrinos. The point is, the core of this star has become a big ball of neutrons, and they don't want to get any closer together. Just like the electrons before them didn't want to touch, these neutrons are packed in tight. They refuse to collapse further, something known as neutron degeneracy pressure. At this point, the star keeps dumping material onto this big pile of neutrons. Stuff strikes the neutrons and reflects back off in a moment known as core bounce. The star tears itself apart as the result of this core of neutrons sitting at the center. What have we got? We have got a supernova. In this process, the star gets as bright as an entire galaxy of stars for a few weeks. An incredibly energetic event second only to the Big Bang. In this event, we create all the elements in the known universe because of the fusion power there. We create all these elements that lead to the formation of life and the terrestrial planets in the universe. And we destroy the star in the process. What's left behind from this supernova, from this star that's greater than eight solar masses, is a ball of neutrons held up by neutron degeneracy pressure. This ball of neutrons is only about 8 to 20 kilometers across. It has a density so high that one teaspoon of a neutron star, as we call it, this neutron star weighs a whopping 1 billion tons. The maximum size of a neutron star is somewhere on the order of about three solar masses. That's as big as they can be. 
They have such a strong gravitational pull that the escape velocity of a neutron star, how fast you need to move just to escape its gravity, is half the speed of light. It's an extreme object, but it's not the end. Because stars that are really big give rise to things that are more than three solar masses. And those things do overcome NDP. They collapse further into something known as a singularity, a singular point. Something with such an intense gravity that the escape velocity of this singularity is greater than the speed of light. Where matter and space, as we understand it, break down. If you're faster than the speed of light for escape velocity, that means that nothing escapes this larger than three solar mass remnant of a big supernova. We call that object a black hole where space is so bent and twisted that the extremity of it all means that nothing can escape the gravitational pull. Now, it doesn't mean everything is sucked in. You could orbit a black hole, but if you get too close, you're in trouble because nothing can escape the gravitational pull of a black hole. The most extreme end state of these enormous stars going to supernova. This brings us to the end of our series. Thanks for watching.